name is Paul Nugent. I'm one of the IOP network coordinators for the Republic of Ireland. Um, David Keenan on cue is the other. Okay. And what we do is we support physics teaching in the Republic and we work with people like the PDST and ISTA and anybody else who will listen to us. We will try and work with them. Okay. We have a full activity today. We all have a physics background. And I'm going to ask everybody to try and be conscious of this little thing, okay, the time. Now, that being said, I know we're starting a little bit late, okay, but we will try and catch up because otherwise it will escalate on. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Ailish. Ailish is the chair of the education group, and she's going to give you the words as well. So, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure every year, the last number of years, as chair of the Institute of Physics in Ireland Education Group, to introduce the, the Project Physics Teachers Conference. This event obviously is our key uh, part of our mission in, in, in physics education, which is represents improvement across the secondary and third level sectors of physics teachers and physics educators. Um, last year we were in Water, and um, this year we're in Duluth, and next year um, GMIT will host the Project of the Physics Conference. So around the, the last Saturday, in September again next year. So put that date in your diaries from now, uh, because we hope to see you in Galway. Gareth Rowe will be our host down here, down there. Um, this year's host, and again, Paul and David, Paul Keenan, Paul, uh, Paul Nugent and David Keenan, um, they haven't got married yet, have you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of come, we kind of come one after one. Um, have worked every year with all of the coordinators and it gives the chance for us to go down to the different physics departments and for them to host the event and to showcase what's going on in physics in their department. And of course, the people surroundings of, of Maynooth, you'll see some of the tours in the afternoon. Um, the local host, which you have to thank tremendously, is Craig O'Sullivan and uh, Peter Vandenberg, who are to here, um, who are staff here in physics in, in Maynooth. And they've worked under the guidance and the directorship, I suppose, of the two lads, um, but to bring this program together. So it's because of those four people that you're here and I'm here and, and that we're going to have such a tremendous lineup for the day. So Cree is going to give you some of the, the details about the campus and the events of the day. Enjoy your day and uh, we'll see you back in Galway next September. <laughs> So first I'd like to welcome you on the behalf of the Department of Experimental Physics, I'd like to welcome you to uh, NUI I know there's some people who are welcoming back that they were here as students, um, it's great to see you back. Uh, so I hope you enjoy um, the day we have planned for you today. Um, uh, there's, there's a few of us here from the new physics department, you might see probably colour our badges with the yellow stripe. Some of the uh, postgraduates were helping you register this morning. We can do anything to help you throughout the day, if you want any assistance, just ask one of us, we certainly do uh, our very best. Um, Maynooth, uh, you may see we have, we have two campuses, North Campus and South Campus, so it's actually a couple of universities here. It's the NUI Maynooth, the NUI University, it's also the Pontifical University, St. Patrick's College Maynooth. And St. Patrick's College is mainly on the South Campus and we're now mainly on the North Campus, but we, we share facilities and, and uh, we do have some things on the South Campus. Um, one of those is the, the, the Science Museum, the Small Science Museum, and it's got both science and ecclesiastical things in there. And in the afternoon we'll go and have a quick uh, tour of that. Also, with Kingston Hall, there we have lunch. So we decided to have the first half of the day on the North Campus here, and the second half of the day on the South Campus. So we'll go for lunch at the South Campus, and we'll stay there then for the rest of the day. They're just joined by the footbridge over the road, so it's only a couple of minutes walk. But if there is anyone, uh, a couple of people who have difficulties getting over there, if you just let me know, I can drive over, and uh, so there shouldn't be any uh, problems that way. We can go door for door. So if you just look at the, the schedule, the morning we have the lectures here. We go back to the the foyer is the physics department uh, where you registered uh, for coffee. So you'll have coffee there and the exhibition will be there again. And um, then we'll be back here for some talks about, um, well, Callum, who's uh, obviously of importance to us now in the and also some talks about the research we do here, just a, a little flavour of some of the research groups. Then after that, we go for lunch in Pugin Hall, and the group is split in two then, just because not everybody can fit inside the museum. So I think on your badges, you should have either red or blue dots. We just did that to split them into two. So maybe group A, the red dots go first, and, and group B will be the blue dots. Uh, it's, it, does, actually, it doesn't really matter, it's just that it's split you uh, roughly in half. Um, also, behind you, stuck in your bag, you probably see a little dinner ticket, or if you pay later, it should be put in uh, your bag. If you don't have that, you just let me know, and I'll, I'll give you one. That's just to look after um, lunch. So I think then that's um, all the housekeeping. And so if I can help you, or any of our postgraduate, the other marks, 
uh, on the badges can help you just let us know. So I hope you enjoy the day. Okay, we're just about to start our first session. Can I say the thanks to the sponsorship of Pharmachemical Island? We are recording the proceedings here and they will be able to, view, to be viewed again from a website. Okay, so um, if you want to go back and have a look at something you've seen. Okay, our first speaker comes from Holland. We'd like to try and bring in somebody from maybe outside the country as our keynote speaker. His name is Paul Dock. And um, from Years ago, he's been experimenting with ICT in physics. From We were chatting from the early days of the BBC Electron, not even the, the Model B. Okay? He has supported many, many teaching groups. He's talked at um, BET and in Hamburg and in other countries around Europe. It's his first time to Ireland, so we give Paul Dodd a really warm welcome. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, we are going, this is not a keynote lecture, it's a keynote workshop. First for me, this size. Uh, we have 40 iPods to work with, and I would like to ask as many people as are available to hand them out to all the participants. We have 40, so there are at least uh, enough for two people, one iPod. and they are all accounted for <laughs> at this time. So this will work uh, when every one of you behaves like you want your students to behave in your classes. <laughs> but we know we were once students also. Um, the lecture is called Physics on the Go, and the subtitle is Using the iPod as a Portable Laboratory. Uh, the iPod was made, well, to play music in first instance. But now it has so much more capabilities and those are the ones we are going to use. Uh, going back in time, uh, probably some of you may have used or still use the decibel meter there on the left. And there are other in, in, uh, industrial devices, all kinds of uh, measurement devices. And you go out with a plan. You have them stored. You want to measure a certain uh, event. Uh, it's not something well, you walk around with. Well, I actually walked around for a year with such a decibel meter after I heard someone with earphones too loud in the metro car. But uh, I'm a crazy guy. <laughs> this one, uh, some of you may know this one. It's, uh, it's a small computer dedicated to uh, slot in, in the front, these kinds of probes. There are more than 100 kinds of probes from this firm. And uh, well, you can do all kinds of measurements, all at the same time. So if you have a probe with five functions, uh, you can slot four of them in and do all the measurements at the same time. But that's changing a bit. We have now the iPod or Apple mobile devices. It started out with the iPods, now we have the iPhone and we have an iPad. They all run the same software. You buy an application for one and it will work on the other. And there is a lot of these things out. So there's a lot of programmers. And of interest for us in uh, science education and physics are the sensors that are built into these devices. And they are built into them not for education, but we can use them. Microphones, accelerometers, gyroscopes, cameras, uh, the iPhone has some more, it has GPS, uh, magnetometers, and the iPad, well, catching up, but still microphone, accelerometers, magnetometers, 
and GPS. So you can write programs for them that use the sensors and do experiments. So uh, we are going to use the old iPod Touch and it has microphone and accelerometers. Please click the home button, that's the big button on the downside. There is a cable for some of these uh, iPods and we didn't have enough microphones, so the microphone is in the cable, just you, you should leave it on, just leave it as it is. Oh, I see I, for, I forgot something. In all the rush, I forgot something. Uh, if it doesn't start up, the top button is needed to start up the iPod. Does everyone have it starting up? Oh, my fault. Should have done that beforehand. Please do come in. When it's starting up, uh, you should see this screen. Maybe you can hold up your iPod so I can see who is not there yet. Ah, yes. Okay, we're getting there. That's good. Now, before we go any further, uh, when you do a project, a science project with an iPod, it's nice to have a record of what you see on the screen. So you can do that, the top button simultaneously with the home button. That makes a snapshot of whatever is on the screen. Just have a go. They have to be pressed exactly at the same time. It takes some practice. Just give it a try. It says click and the screen flashes. Yes, that's the one. <clears throat> when you're successful, uh, when you're still here, slide the button to the right, and then you come to the first screen. And the first screen looks like this. Are we all there? Yep, okay. There's a photos application, and if you tap once on it, then you get all the pictures you have taken, either with the camera, which this one doesn't have, but also the screens you have captured. It's okay? And if you're done, you're content uh, with whatever it uh, has happened. You simply click the home button and then you're back on the home screen. Now, just uh, to see how this works, you slide the screen to the left to come to the next one. This is where we will be working. There's another one. I put in some uh, extra applications, science applications. And if you want to go back, you slide to the right. So let's go here. Everybody here on the second screen? Okay. Well, we're going to look at three kinds of experiments. Uh, acceleration, sound, and external sensors. External sensors is mostly a uh, demo because I don't have 40 sets of those. But uh, at least you can uh, see what it, uh, what it looks like. Let's start with uh, acceleration. Uh, these accelerometers today are, well, minute. They are on a chip. And there's three of them on a chip, three axes. X, Y, and Z, and this is how they are 
located. So we are going to do a few things. First, angles. Start up this application. Was I too quick? This one. Everybody there? Okay. Well, just experiment a bit with it. There's a button downstairs there. So you can change from angles to percentages. And if you hold it flat, you can measure surfaces. You don't have one. Oh, you can look with them. Okay. Okay. I think so. If we can go to about 20 to a quarter, I know that's Try. Your yes, time. yes, yes, yes. Try. Okay. This is just. Uh, there are many, many applications that do this. And uh, there's a bit of a competition among uh, programmers with an interest in science and uh, mechanics to make these uh, programs. Well, uh, if you want to exit, and we want to at this moment, click the home button once and we're back where we were. Let's look at the second program. Max G-force, and it takes one axis, the y-axis of the iPhone, of the iPod, to do its measurements. If you start it up, it's a fun program, very simple, it doesn't record anything, it just keeps the maximum values it has, and you can uh, take a snapshot and the whole thing is you can level it out so you will not have the gravity, the force of gravity. So you can sit in a car, for instance, and measure the sideways acceleration when you go through a turn. Or you, uh, well, all kinds of, it, of ideas, acceleration of the car. I've tried this in a train and you will be amazed at the low level of acceleration in a train. And you say, well, then we go by airplane. And still, you feel the push back in your seat while uh, taking off. And when you use this program, it's next to nothing. It's quite amazing. On the other hand, when you shake the program, you will see that you can easily reach 2.3 G. Now just imagine your own sensors in your head being in your hand and doing this. You would all faint. So a very simple program, very useful to measure forces. Well, let's uh, go to the next one. Click the home button. We go to a seismograph. There are many, many seismographs for the iPod. Uh, but this is a particularly nice one. <coughs> iSeismo, it's called. It's a bit, bit of a strange name. And here we have the access again. Oh dear. Uh, you, need, you need two iPods for that. One in your hand and one on the table. <coughs> I had hoped this wouldn't get out of hand, but... Uh, <laughs> when you go to the settings, 
Uh, oh, before you go to the settings, uh, there are three axes, and now you can see sideways, front, and up, down, and you see the three needles recording each uh, axis. But when you go to the settings, <coughs> there's a lot of things you can do, and this is actually a working seismometer. You can simply tape it to, well, any uh, building and just leave it for a month. The data collected is, well, uh, very small, it's just numbers, so you can uh, collect data at uh, infinitum. And here you can set uh, sampling rates, uh, well, all kinds of settings. Uh, just don't change anything. Uh, I'll take you through what it would look like if you are going to use this program uh, seriously. Uh, you have to reset the program if you want to change anything. But if you do, then you can sample the data, collect it, and use it to well, send it out. Uh, what this program does, the, the programmer has a FTP site and you can simply upload it to this FTP site and send yourself a mail. <coughs> send yourself a mail and uh, in the mail is the link to your data and this is where you can download the data. And if you have a month of data, it might get a bit too big for the mail, so that's why they did this. And then you have a big list of numbers that you can put in your spreadsheet and go from there. Okay, let's quit seismometer. Well, uh, very nice program. Couldn't leave this one out. Coaster mate. It's specifically designed to measure forces of acceleration in roller coasters or anything like it. So I would like to take you through this and uh, you need to type in something. When you're here, simply type something in, anything will do. And you can type in a name, location, and uh, it knows where you have been. So I did this uh, experiment in Prague. And then, are we all there? Anybody stuck anywhere? You can uh, put in which car you have, left or right, uh, anything will go. And then you press the start button. And then it will start recording. <laughs> well, <laughs> even in a roller coaster, well, It's a lot uh, less G-forces than what you do with your hands at this time. <laughs> well, when you're done, uh, well, you're all grown up, so at some time you're done, you press the stop button. And then the program will display a graph and you can uh, take the graph, slide it sideways to look through it. You will see a, a marker here. So you can uh, have an initial look. <coughs> There's a scale button. You can stretch and compress the graph. Yeah. 
And in the end, when you're done, you can email the results to yourself. It will only record for 10 minutes. I uh, noticed that when I was in an airplane and I thought, well, I use this program. And we sat on the Thermac for half an hour. I had it hidden because we were not allowed to have anything on, no electronics. So, and when I uh, was in flight, I noticed, well, no data of any significance. So it's only 10 minutes because any coaster ride will last less than 10 minutes. Um, I'll show you this. There's no email uh, setup on these iPods, so uh, it won't work from yours. But uh, from inside the program, you simply put in your email address. You have to be in range of some Wi-Fi network, and then you send it. This is what it looks like, the email. And this is what's in the data file. And you can read it in, in your spreadsheet, and start doing all these nice things. OK. Press the home button. Oh, sorry, the back button. And then you get a uh, summary of where you've been on this coaster and back again uh, which coasters you have been in. So you get an entire uh, resume of all your coaster rides and there are groups, many groups all over the world who travel all over the world, go to any coaster they can find and this is the program for them. <laughs> But also of course for physics students because for obvious reasons. So now you can click the home button and exit the program. Let's uh, leave acceleration behind us and uh, accelerate to the next uh, set of experiments. This kind of iPod doesn't have an internal microphone, so we have an external microphone. Uh, some have these uh, cables with the earbuds but there's also a very small microphone in there and some have the plug-in uh, thumbnail uh, microphone so we are going to use that there's a program audio tools and the programmer never had anything with education in mind it's a professional tool a set of tools for measuring uh, sound studios But it's very useful for us because there are some modules and we'll look at a few that are very nice for physics. First, the decibel meter. Everyone there? This is the second point where things get out of hand. <laughs> Rightly so. <laughs> It is. It's an exact copy of the old one 50 years ago, uh, 25 years ago. No, you can just buy them in the shops. Obviously, uh, the programmer who made this, he didn't have uh, this in mind. But he had in mind the iPhone with its standard microphone. And that's what it's tailored to. So if you plug in an external microphone of any kind, uh, any calibration is out of the door. So you have to recalibrate somehow, if that is appropriate, of course. It's an uh, entire <coughs> concept calibration, so I don't know when it comes into uh, physics uh, courses. But, but uh, the program comes with a calibration uh, option. 
So it has uh, all these uh, things uh, put into it. Well, we have just experimented. <coughs> and to leave it, the program, just push that button, top left. And you go back to the set of uh, modules. We go back another one. I know some people are still <laughs> measuring decibels. Yes? Mm, no, this one. That's the one. And then, so. Here we are. We are going to line input. And there's an oscilloscope in there. <coughs> this is what it looks like. Are we all there? Okay, there we are. You have several buttons. We'll look at two of them. The gain, and the gain is uh, very useful. When it's loud, you put the gain down. When it's quiet sounds, you put the gain up. Uh oh. I don't know what that is. There's also the time base. But let's uh, try to do an experiment. And what I'm going to do now is make some noise myself. And if you all can quiet down a bit, uh, maybe you can tune in to this. Well, if the uh, waves are too compact, you can tune the time base. Yes, uh, right bottom, right bottom. Then you can select another time base. At some point you should see a nice sine wave in your screen. Well, it works all right. Okay. Um, oh, it stopped. So you push the... Yes, yes. You will see a sine wave? Now. Let's do an experiment and see if you can see this, the tops contracting and elongating. Uh, let's see if this goes all right. Can you see anything? Whoops. Okay. Well, it's a feeble attempt at the Doppler effect. Uh, you don't see anything uh, you can actually use, I think. But you can see sometimes an effect. If you tune the oscilloscope right, you can see a little bit of contraction of the sine waves. But. Uh, <coughs> Leave the oscilloscope. Again, the back button, and then we go to acoustics. Now think about it. Uh, you have this small device in your pocket, and you already have an oscilloscope. Now we are going to a spectrograph. That is a dream come true 
for any physicist, of course, to have your own spectrograph always at hand, anywhere you are. So this one, you can set a few settings. Okay, there we are. I have an iPod here with a camera and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I see the spike. Let's do the Doppler effect so you can all join in. And uh, just uh, so you know, the handkerchief is just so you can see where this thing is. I would like to make an impression rather than an indentation in you. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Look at your own screen because it's better. Can you see anything? Now what you can do With two fingers, pinch out and focus on the spike. Focus on the spike. You all have the spike enlarged? Okay, here we go again. Uh, I should do it here also. There we go again for the Doppler effect. Okay, there we are. Well, one of my favorite uh, experiments. Um, quit this entire program by clicking on the home button and we go to the next one. That's a waterfall spectrograph. Like this. You have it? Okay. This is a very nice program. Very nice to always have hand have at hand because any bird, any anything around you, you can visualize in this uh, spectrograph. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Not looking good. Okay, let's try again. There's a pause button. Of course, you can pause it and then take a snapshot. There's a settings panel. So if you go to the settings panel, that's here. Um.
And what we want to do is these settings. Logarithmic scale off. Legend on gain. Well, put it somewhere in the middle. That's, that's a bit of a gamble. And sample rate 8 kilohertz. I put that in. Uh, that's it. And then we go back to the program. We confirm these settings. And here we are. Let's try. You all see the, the line? I hope. There we go. Can you see it? Well, you have to experiment a bit with the settings. The gain is essential here. But what we see here is you see the frequency going up and down, but it comes within an envelope. And the envelope is caused by all the reflections here of this uh, room. So if you do it outside in the open, the envelope should go away and you should be left with only the frequency going up and down. <coughs> Okay, uh, this is the video I had. Well, uh, this device I just used, sorry, just to get your attention. <laughs> uh, I first built this for use with a car for demonstrating the Doppler effect. You put it over the, uh, the side shield, the side uh, window, you turn the side window up. You have the switch on the inside and the noise on the outside and you turn it on and you drive past your students who are all well <laughs> ready with iPods nowadays nowadays <laughs> and you can set up a line of students close to the road and away from the road and you see all these different uh, forms of uh, going up and down in the frequency. Uh, graph. Okay, uh, just another uh, thing that uh, well shows what I would like to convey to you. Uh, this is uh, Groningen University. I was uh, visiting there with a few friends to look at their uh, observatory, and there where the pointer is. We came from there and we walked through these two buildings and they had absolutely smooth reflecting surfaces. So you walk into that corridor and you hear the reverberations. So I thought, ah, this is an older version of the program. What I did was, I thought, how can I uh, determine the resonance frequency of this cavity? So what I did was, and you see the spike and what I got between this, those two buildings two flags behind the spikes and that this is the base resonance frequency and this is the first overtone about 600 hertz and all kinds of people looking at the resident <laughs> idiot <laughs> shall we do something well better move along but this is what you get with this thing that you always have with you. You get in a situation where you say, well, you used to say, well, if I had something to measure this, and now you have. <coughs> okay, exit the program. Um, this is a demonstration part. Uh, some things didn't work out, I tested them in the building on the south campus this is north right what is yeah. and it worked and here it doesn't very simple this device is a wireless microscope and uh, 
you can set up your iPod or your iPhone or iPad with a reception for this uh, microscope. And what you get is a display where you can capture anything that's visible. There's a light in there, so for instance, for field work outside, mostly biology then, I think, a uh, teacher has it in his hands and uh, students, each with an iPod for instance, or an iPad, they get the image of the microscope on their screens and they can say capture, freeze and do anything they like with it. Or you can reconfigure so that the teacher uses the capture button. So you have 30 students, one press on the button is 30 captures on all the devices and the students go home with anything the teacher thinks is useful for them. But it's, uh, it's a bit overwhelmed by all the wireless networks here, so a bit of a problem. <coughs> this is uh, the resolution you get from this device. And it's very nice. It's biology. I hope you're not offended by biology being <laughs> physics teachers. Um, this took a lot of practice to take, but this, the best part to photograph hair vessels is at the white of your eye. And you see one here going into the white of the eye. Very nice, I think. Okay. Uh, the last subject. How many minutes do we have? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Fifteen. Wow. Oh, we were going for it. Okay. Uh, of course, there are many firms who make probes for science education. And uh, they all are looking at this and saying, well, there's somebody coming to eat our lunch. And uh, Pasco is one of them. And they decided that uh, attack is the best defense, so they joined in. And they made a device, this one, it's called the PASCO AirLink. And what it does, it controls, uh, the iPod can control the PASCO AirLink. And in the AirLink is a big block battery and you slot in any PASCO sensor and from that moment on you will be able to use that sensor on your iPod or iPhone. And just so <coughs> to keep away the competition from themselves, you can only use one uh, channel from each uh, sensor. So this one has for instance an uh, uh, anemometer, uh, temperature, uh, humidity, and then some derived uh, values as wind chill, but you can only measure one at a time. With the combined uh, data logger, which I showed in uh, first uh, from PASCO, you can slot one in and do all these measurements all at the same time. I'll simply turn one on. Let's see. Okay, please start up your program. There we are. <coughs> okay. Have you all started it? Uh, let me see, where are you? Yes, okay. Uh, the whole point is to go back to this screen where you can put in experiments. Um, create a new one. Oh, that's a bit weird. It's upside down. 
well, forget about uh, the projector. Now, what you do is you fill out the form, and you have no link to any of these uh, AirLink devices. So the program says, well, the sensor I see is the accelerometer. So let's use this one. So we are going to do some measurements. Just fill in anything. And this is the one program I'm showing you that's designed for education. So I would like to uh, take you through it in a very fast way. <coughs> Simply fill in anything. Anything will do. You save it. And then you see what you can choose. You set up your experiment, the accelerometer. If you tap on it, you get some options. And there you can select all the options you have for this uh, sensor. So what we want to do is accelerometer, axis x, and we are measuring g's. And then you say done to confirm. And this is the setup for the experiment. So confirm. Are we all there somewhat? Somewhat? Am I going too fast or uh, <coughs> does it work? Anything does. Confirm, save. Or save. Okay. And when we have uh, confirmed by clicking the done button, there we have our experiment. So this is the setup and all the settings are in there. And if you tap on this name, we go to the actual screen. Ah, you're there. Does it work? Yeah, there you are. Everybody here? Okay, no protests. Could mean that nobody is there, but... Uh, okay, this is uh, how they laid it out. And there are several screens. You can tap twice. Tick, tick. And then the bars will disappear. And then the screen can't be moved uh, or changed. So you tap twice, and then the bars come back. And with the bars visible, you can move between screens. So if you slide the screen to the left, you come to another screen. It's the gauge screen. It has a simple gauge, so you can look at things this particular way. Swipe again and you get to a value screen. Well, we go back to the data collection screen. And there we are. We tap the start button and then we start collecting data. <coughs> Are we succeeding in collection of data? Okay. While you are collecting data and you have the bars visible, you can still swipe and go to the next screen. So now you have a gauge that's active.
and you can go to the value screen. Okay. We go back to the data collection screen. You tap the start button and you stop. You tap it again, you start a new run. The old one remains visible and the next one starts. Well, if you remove the bars by tapping twice, then you can put a finger in the graph and slide it around. And you can also put two fingers on the screen and pinch out or pinch in, so you can look at regions of interest. And you can do the same for the gauge screen. You simply can rotate the gauge and you can drag the scale out for higher resolution. Well, I'm going too fast, obviously, but uh, just the point is that you take a look at this and uh, when you're in the data collection screen and you've stopped collecting data, you can uh, see with the summary button what you have done by now. And then you can send the email with all the data. Okay, uh, I'll show you this, how this works. This is the last bit. Uh, you simply type in your email address. This is mine, of course. And uh, type in a subject. Well, that was the mail. You go to your mail where it has arrived and this is the mail it sent. And this is what it looks like. And this is what you get to put in your spreadsheet. Okay. Um, I'll simply skip the rest because uh, we don't have any more time, I believe. Um, I was going to show you some more, but... Uh, oh yeah, this is nice. Uh, when you have... Yes. Not yet. That's why I use the camera here. Not yet. I don't know when it will arrive. But who knows? Um, when you're in a situation uh, in a lab with uh, 20 students, uh, 20 iPods, uh, and all these air links, what students will do is go to the Bluetooth selection panel and it will list all these devices, but they all have a number on the back that corresponds with a number there. And each student should select the number that's on their device. And from that moment on, they have control over the, the probes they put in the air link. So that's how it's designed to work. So let me see. Um, I move on a bit. Just in case uh, you're not uh, familiar with the, all this, all these applications, they have one source, that's the iTunes application store. So there's a program you have to have in order to manage your iPod or iPhone, and the store is right in there. And uh, this is taken a, a snapshot taken when I had 23 something hundred applications. Uh, now it's 4,000. Uh, and there are many moments that, are, that applications are free. For instance, by, with introductions. Uh, you get a three-day free application. And, well, 
download it and you have it. Uh, there are too many applications, so Apple is trying to uh, make a website where you can pre-select and then uh, say, well, uh, educations, uh, applications are there. I have tried to make a website. Uh, it's still on and I tried to update it, but it's very difficult. And this is also a source that tries to pre-select Well, hopefully I've shown you something uh, that's interesting for you. Any questions?